my part 3 of the active and passive voice uh, rules that I am doing. I have already done part 1 which deals with tense. Part 2 which deals with the other rules. Uh, and, uh, this is my part 3, the last part of my active and passive rules. So here I shall be discussing the remaining of the rules. So let's see. Number 1, I have here reflexive object. Now, what happens here? There are words like himself, themselves, uh, herself, and all these things, ourselves, words which are used. These are reflexive and emphatic words. Now, these words are there in sentences. So, what happens and how do we change such sentences? That's the question. Let's see. See, here you have a sentence, she heard herself. She heard herself. This is your reflexive word. Herself is your reflexive word. Now this word, what do we do here? Should we write herself was heard by her? That doesn't make any kind of sense. So, for that reason, what we do here is we add it in a different way. We write the word as it is. The subject doesn't change. She heard becomes was heard. So she remains she. Heard becomes was heard. The, because it is in the past tense, so you write it was heard. By is the preposition that we use and then we write the word as it is, the reflexive word, herself. Okay, that means she heard herself becomes she was heard by herself. Okay, so this is how you do any kind of reflexive uh, sentences that you have. Okay, now moving on to the next part which is the infinitives. Now infinitives I think you know, um, two plus verb in the present tense which we use um, with the verb, the verb in the present tense. The infinitive structure of the sentence, to plus verb in the present tense, like to play, to run, to walk, to sing, and all this. So, in such sentences, what do we do? See, I have written two variations here for you to understand. Let's see. There is no time to lose. There is no time to lose. What do we do here? So, see, the infinitive structure is here, to lose. This is the infinitive structure. So, what do we do here? We write the sentence as it is. There is no time. Then, to lose becomes only this part becomes the passive. To be lost. To lose becomes to be lost. So there is no time to lose becomes there is no time to be lost. So this is one way in which you can do sentences depending on the sentence of course. Most importantly you have to see the sentence and um, find out which is the configuration which is or which rule is applicable which kind of formation I can make which makes sense. Just like in case of the reflexive I just explained. Uh, you cannot just change it to passive active and the regular tense nice rules. You cannot do it in that way. You have to do it differently. Here also there are two variations and you have to see the sentence and accordingly you have to make it in that way. Let's see the second sentence. I am to make a telephone call. Now here the subject is I and then this comes the this is the infinitive word to make. And what is the object? A telephone call. So I is the subject. To make is the infinitive here. This is our main verb. And uh, a telephone call is here. This is the object. The object comes in the subject part. See, a telephone call comes here. I equal comes me. By me. Okay? Telephone call from the object in the subject. This subject I moves to the object part by me. And becomes is. It undergoes a change. It uh, doesn't go into the passive. See, what happens in the passive? Or which verb moves into the passive? This infinity. This infinity moves into the passive. To make becomes to be made. So here it was am, I wrote is. I did not write any other formation because you cannot write the passive of any uh, uh, B word. So that remains the same. What we change into the passive is to make. To make which is the infinitive we change it into the passive and it becomes to be made. So I am to make a telephone call becomes a telephone call is to be made by me. A telephone call is to be made by me. Now, the next rule. The next rule is about negatives. How do we change uh, active to passive in case of negative sentences? And negative sentences, mind you, they are regular sentences, assertive uh, sentences structure, or it may be questioning sentences. So, if there is a negative sentence in terms of a regular assertive sentence or an interrogative sentence or a questioning sentence, how do we change it? Let's see. She does not like cabbages. Here is your first sentence, here you have a negative. She does not like, not is here. How do we change it? Simple. 
just to write the subject and the object part in the reverse, just as you know the rule. Cabbages comes in the subject, she goes in the object. Okay, cabbages comes here, it's the subject now. And this her, she from here, her, it becomes. Now, does not like, what does it become? Does moves over and comes the formation of R. Not is written as it is, and then the word main verb, which is like. The main verb is like, not does. Does is the supporting verb. So, like, the main verb, is changed into the third form, which is liked. You know the three verbs, uh, uh, the present past and the past participle? Like, liked, liked, uh, the past participle? Liked. So, are not liked. So, see here, what happens in regular sentences is that the infinitives, uh, sorry, in case of negatives, uh, the negative stays in the middle. That is, between the two verbs, the supporting verb and the main verb. Both in the question and in the answer. See here. Does not like. It does in the supporting verb. Like is the main verb. In the middle is not. Okay. Similarly, here also when we are writing the passive, again there is a supporting verb which is R. And then there is another word which is the main verb, the like. So between R and like, we write the negative word. So that's the basic rule in case of assignment sentences that you write the negative word in between the two verbs, the supporting verb and the main verb. Okay. See another example. Hema did not break the class. Hema did not break the class. Hema is the subject. Did is the supporting verb. Break is the main verb. Not is written in the middle. Okay. The class is the object. So object comes in the subject. The class Hema, the subject becomes the object. By Hema it becomes. Okay. This part is done. The subject and the object part is clear. Now we move on to the verb. Now did not break becomes was not broken. See again, did becomes here changed to was the past tense because it is in the past tense. Um, actually did and break are combined together it becomes broke. So broke means was broken. So that is what is written. Was broken. Two verbs again. The supporting verb is was. Main verb is broken. In the middle we write not. I hope this part is clear. Now I move on to the questioning. So let's see. Has he not seen the picture, the uh, movie? Here is not. Here is our negative word. Has he not seen the movie? What happens? Uh, you know the change of the sentences in terms of questioning, how to change it. If not, you see my uh, video, the second one, wherein I have discussed uh, step by step how to change the questioning sentences from active to passive. Step by step, I have explained. So, following that, I am not going into that again. You see that video, you will understand how I have changed it. So, has he not seen the movie? Here it becomes, has not the movie been seen by him? Has not the movie been seen by him? So he becomes here, he comes here by him. The movie goes in the front. Has seen becomes, has been seen. Okay, as for the rules of present perfect. Has seen becomes, has been seen. And not is written here before the subject. One place where you can write not in case of questioning sentences. So, this is how it is changed. And uh, see, has it will be changed into has because uh, it will start the sentence will start with has because if the question has to end with the question, the answer uh, it has to be written in a questioning form. So, we have written has in the beginning. The other things are in the middle, change into the passive and not comes out. Now, let's see another variation here, the second sentence. Had Irfan not called her? Had Irfan not called her? So Irfan is the subject here, her is the object, her comes in the beginning, which is she. Irfan goes here by Irfan. Okay. Now, not called, had called actually it is. Had called. What will change it into? Had been called. See, had been called. Clear? Now, what will happen with not? Here, not is written after the subject. Here. And is uh, not is written after the subject she. Okay. So in here, in terms of questioning sentences, you can write it either before the subject or you can write it after the subject. If you are not word or the negative word, you can write before the subject or you can write after the subject. But that depends on the, the meaning and the placements and all. So that you have to be very careful about when you are writing such uh, sentences in terms of questioning and uh, as well as the other the regular structured sentences. Now, the next rule. The next rule is verb with complement with a complement and verb without a complement. Verb with a complement and verb without a complement. Let's see what happens in these cases. Now, the verb here complements a particular case. The honey tastes sweet. It adds a, a complement to the subject or to this particular
particular verb. Okay, what kind of taste it is? Sweet. So it qualifies that particular verb. Now, what do we do here? How do we change some sentences? See, honey tastes sweet. So what do we do is, honey tastes sweet. Your taste is removed. The verb is removed. We put in a simple present tense verb which matches with the original sentence. The sentence is in the present tense. Tastes without is. If it is in the past, we would have written past. Anyway, so that is matching. Next, what do we do? We put in this clause word. Where? And then this particular word, tastes, moves over here. Is tasted and we put in the subject. So, honey is sweet when it is tasted. Honey is sweet. When is it sweet? When it is tasted. So, in that way you have to break it down this particular complement. Make it into a separate clause part and write it. Okay. So, honey is sweet when it is tasted. Okay. The next one. The stone feels rough. How do you know that the stone is rough? When you touch the stone. Just like in the case of honey. You taste honey, you know it is sweet. Similarly, how do you know the stone is rough? You touch it. Touch perception. So here, the stone feels rough. You are touching it. You are feeling it. So here, what we do? Similar to this first sentence, we write, the stone feels rough. The stone feels rough. When does it feel rough? When it is felt. So from here, feels, we take out this particular part. Particularly the verb, felt. Okay. We take it in the third form, feel, felt, felt. We write it here. We write the present tense verb is when it is felt. So when do we feel a uh, stone is rough? We feel a stone is rough when it is felt. Okay. Now moving to the other aspect which is verbs without a complement. Now there is no complement with the verb. What we do? Example. The trumpets are sounding. Who is sounding the trumpets? Someone is doing that. So let's see what happens. The trumpets are sounding. What we do here? We write only the passive part. This part only is at this. Our sounding becomes our being sounded. So it is our sounding. It becomes our being sounded. By whom that is not necessary because it is obvious that some people is doing, are doing it. So the trumpets are sounding becomes the trumpets are being sounded. Similarly, the cow is milking. Who is milking the cow? The cow cannot milk on its own. Someone is milking the cow. That we know. So what we do again here, we write only the passive part. Uh, of the word here. Yeah. The subject is the same, no change from active uh, from subject to predicate. Uh, so subject to object, it doesn't go, it remains in the subject. And the verb is milking becomes is being is being milked. Moving on to the next part, which is complex sentences. Now complex sentences you know I think, but still uh, sentences which have clauses in them, they are complex sentences. Simple sentences do not have that. So what happens and how do we change uh, active sentences containing uh, uh, in the complex structure into the passive? How do we change them? Let's see how we change the uh, from active to passive in terms of complex sentences. Now see here, we know that Palamba has discovered America. Now you see here already there are two parts here in the sentence, the cross structure. We know that Columbus discovered America. We know that Columbus discovered America. This part is joined to this part with this clause word that. How do we change it? Because there are two parts in the sentence, we can change the two different parts itself. First see, we know, this is one part. Columbus discovered America. This is another part. How do we change it? We know becomes it is known to us. By now, I think you know the rules how to change it. So uh, we know becomes it is known to us. Okay, this first part. Then we write the clause word which is that. And Columbus discovered America becomes America was discovered by Columbus. Understood. So because there are two parts here in the sentence, we change both the parts wherever possible. If it is not possible, then it is separate. But otherwise, if it is possible, we change both the sides of the sentence. Both the main uh, clause as well as the sub clause. Both the parts we change into the different uh, passive structures. Next, they hope that they shall finish the work in time. First part is they hope. Next part after the clause, which is they shall finish the work in time. These are two again, two different structures. They hope is one. And the other one is they shall finish the work in time. 
How do we change it? Again, as it is possible, we change they hope into it is hoped by them. Wherever there is no subject, we write it. Okay. So it is hoped by them. This becomes the first part. That remains the same. They shall finish the work in time. The work shall be finished in time. Now, one thing we did is we did not write the object they. They did not come here as by them. Why? Because we have already written it. And just because we have written it once, we don't need to write it twice. The meaning is conveyed through this particular by them itself. Okay. So I do not need to write it again here. So in this way, you see, in case of complex sentences, what we do, we change the structure of the sentence by uh, the two different aspects or two different parts. First, we uh, change the main clause, which is there, that we change. Then we change the uh, other part, which is the subordinate clause, whatever is given to us. We change both the structures whenever possible. Whenever possible, we change both the structures, which is better to be on the same side. Now here are many students so do not uh, change both the structures, they sometimes change one part of the structure of the sentence. So in that case what happens is you are liable then to be uh, cut out uh, wrong by the teacher. The teacher may cut the sentence saying that why did you not change the first part of the sentence. Okay, so just because of that reason I am saying it is better to be on the safe side and change both the parts of the sentence if and when possible. If and when possible it is better to change both the main clause as well as the sub clause to be on the safe side so that the teacher does not have any option but to give you marks and make it correctly. But otherwise, if you leave out one part, there is a possibility that your answer may be wrong. Okay. Moving on. Now, the next part that we go into is prepositions. So different prepositions. What is different prepositions? For normally, when you do the passive voice, what we write before the object? You write by, what is it? By him, by her, and all. You write like that. Here we are going to discuss some sentences where we do not write by, we write some other prepositions. So let's see. I know the answer. Simple sentence, we change it into I. The answer is known to me, not by me. Why not by? Why we not written by? Because of the simple word no. K-N-O-W-No. I know. Now how will you tell anyone or how will you show anyone that you know the answer? You will say the answer then everyone will know. But the question is, out of 10 students, how will the teacher know that one student knows the answer? It's not possible to go inside and keep into the mind and know which uh, student uh, knows the answer. So because it is physically not possible to see, that's the reason why we do not use by here. It's not like saying run, play, walk, which you can physically see. But here, this is physically intangible. Okay, you cannot know this person. Uh, I know that man. That man is known to me. How do you know? There are many people walking on the streets. How do you know that you, uh, how do, uh, you know that I know this particular person? It's not possible for you to know that. Understood? So because it is not possible to guess these things, we write a different preposition like right here. Okay. See another one. Light filled the room. The room was filled with light. Not by light. Now why not by? Because light, of course, is not a person. It's not a person. It's something Intangible, you cannot touch. This room is lighted up with light. I cannot touch the light. I can only see it. I can feel it. But here, this light is not possible to be uh, physically touched. So that's the reason why it is written not by light, it is written with light.